It was spring of 2022, and after what seemed like an eternity, the lockdowns were concluding. The country was starting to open up, and life seemed to be getting back to normal. As a consequence, Vietnam was going to have its first officially sanctioned enduro race. And since I had been fooling around on a dirt bike for the previous two years, I decided to sign up. One mild spring day in April, I met the rest of our Namduro crew down at the garage. There were several people competing and many coming along to watch. We had a truck to transport the bikes and before too long, we had a bus for the people. Fortunately, it didn't take much time to get out of the city and into the beautiful countryside of North Vietnam. But unsurprisingly, our simple trip ran into a snag. One of the rear tires blew, which meant the driver couldn't support all of our weight. So here we are, about to be abandoned on the side of the road, because <clears throat> he can't fix the bus. He cannot fix the bus here. So he unceremoniously unloaded us off onto the road and went back into town. But as daylight faded, he returned and retrieved us. Back on the road. That wasn't too bad of a delay. Although a bit late, we rolled into our lodging for the night. We finally made it. Oh, my arse so dead, man. <laughs> the race was going to be in three classes over two days. The first class was for bikes 150 cc's or less. The second was for bikes up to 250 cc's. The final class was 250 cc's or larger. It's been an eventful day, I would say, as is always. So I'll be setting out tomorrow for the track. We'll be doing practice, and then we'll be doing time trials tomorrow. And then the day after, we will be doing the actual race. So I hope that I can qualify and get into the final race. The next morning, we drove to the racing location it was 20 degrees Celsius, dry, sunny, and there were hundreds of people. It looked like the perfect day for a race. So I took a try at a practice lap. And at the first obstacle, this happened. I did finish the lap after some struggle, but when I brought the bike back, there was some bad news. My master cylinder for the rear brake was trashed and we didn't seem to have the parts to fix it in such short notice. So not only was I going to have to start the qualifier a bit fatigued and frankly a little shaken, I was going to do the whole two laps with no rear brake. The first two classes of riders ran their heats and then the professional class was next. What did I get myself into? So when my number came up, I pushed my bike out of the paddock and got on the starting line. ride through the stream was easy. Then came the dreaded concrete slope. Someone had told me to put the power on in the mud 
and take it easy on the slope. And apparently, that worked. Wow. Down the slope, over the jump, and through the stream again, up to the next obstacle, which I had not yet tried a single time. A muddy, rutted off camber slope out of the stream. I wondered how many tries it would take, considering how many other people were falling on it. But I gave it a go. reached the top, no one was more surprised than I. Through the tea trees. I did it. Woo! And back onto the road. I was euphoric. If I could get over those first two major obstacles, I knew that I could do this whole race, no problem. It was a beautiful location, of course blocked by the water on my camera lens. Down this trail was the final major obstacle, the big hill. I don't want to. The rebound had not been properly adjusted on my back wheel. And on this little tiny trail, that suddenly came into play. And it came into play again. Oh no. I tried to get the bike that last two meters up to the path, but it was just too steep. and nobody seemed very interested in stopping to help me either. While I was catching my breath, I looked around and saw a path below. It was quite steep to get there, and I had no rear brake, but I figured it was worth giving it a try. I was not about to quit. going? I don't know. I went down the path one way. Which evaporated after about a minute. Just my luck. and I had to struggle the bike around the other way. I'm so tired. I'm lost. I fell down a hill. I've fallen, I can't get up. It 
it wasn't too long before I was back onto the main trail. And I even ran into one of my friends. I need a breather. Did you see me exploring down there? I did, yeah. Oh, I'm so tired. You have such a great bike. The no back brake. Yeah, I get a lot of compliments on the bike. Too bad I can't ride it very well. <laughs> back through the same little path and up a steep hill along to the big steep hill. I lost a bit of control and ended up going to the side, but I was able to make it, albeit ingloriously. The rest of the trail was not too difficult. Sometimes a bit narrow, but beautiful. I kept thinking to myself, man, a wonderful race with perfect weather in a beautiful place. Can it get any better? Well, it could have been better if I had both my brakes. As I rolled across the river to complete my first lap, I was already tired. And it showed as I crossed the log rack. but I was able to cross the stream and hit the concrete without falling. Yes. And then it was up to the muddy slope again. All the trail marshals and helpers were gone and I realized I would have to do this hill totally alone or bust. Oi, oi, oi. So I gave it the hammer in second gear. Wah, no problem, yeah, of course. back up to the road and I realized that the big hill was still ahead and I wondered if I could even do it with my low energy levels. But I was so late from my early detour off the side of the hill. The marshals had shut off the big hill, leaving me uh, no choice but to Take the easier hill. Well, okay, guys, if you twist my arm. What's up, guys? Hey. Taking a break? Yeah. Me too. Even though this was the easier hill, I still needed a bit of help to crest it. I had to go slow because of the brake situation, switching off my engine down some of the slopes for better engine braking.
I was so late, I didn't know if I'd qualify. But then again, I really didn't care. Finally, I came into the stream and across the line. A few people congratulated me. I was so physically and mentally drained that I was just glad to be done. I can't believe I made that. Oh, I can't believe I made it up that slope. Man, what are you on about? Every time. I know. You're shaking, man. You all right? That was a hard. That was oh my God, man. I'm tired. He's last champion. Well, at least I finished. <laughs> Afterwards, I wandered around the pits and ran into the usual. Broken bikes, repairs, and fellow competitors. Good job, Jack. Good job, man. Completed the a lap, man. One lap done. One That's good enough. First race. I didn't know if I was going to complete a lap. So what, what's the issue, Paul? <laughs> I mean, well, with the bike that is. <laughs> Spark plug for racing tomorrow morning. Mm. Lube up the chain, check the oil, check the cooling. Okay. So thus far, as you can see, we have a lot of people. They're sweaty, sunburnt, tired, and working on broken bikes, but having a good time. Um, and I was so shocked when I did the uh, professional class because I first tried it, and I went up a concrete uh, embankment for a bridge. I'll show you. This type of hand, this type of um, embankment, and it was so steep in the wet that I dropped my bike twice. So basically, people are falling all over the place on both the bridge and the off-camber slope at the start, right at the start. And I broke my rear brake, and I thought, I will never be able to complete this race. But I got in there, got some advice from people how to take care of the various obstacles, and I did it. Now, whether or not I will actually be able to be in the race, the final, is another matter. I, on one hand, I don't think I will because I was so slow, but on the other hand, maybe I will because so many people could not finish the race.